Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we are talking about my beauty wish list. I do these videos where I go through and tell you guys about products that are kind of on my radar at the moment. I love doing this because it helps me to get some feedback from you guys about whether you think they're good products as well before I run out and purchase them. <laughs> the video is divided into two halves. The first part I kind of talk about products I talked about last time that I was interested in. A, whether I bought them. B, if I did, what did I think of them. And then the second part I go over the items that have made it onto my wish list since then. Now, I really like to make wish lists because it helps me to avoid impulse buying. I can't say it's foolproof. I did get a bit suckered into some sales recently, but adding items I'm interested in to a wish list helps me to kind of sit on them, mull over them a bit, really figure out whether I actually want to bring them into my collection. Now, if you've watched my other wish list videos, you guys know that I use Shop Tagger to organize my wish lists, and I'm very proud to announce that this video is indeed sponsored again by Shop Tagger. There are so many reasons why I love them. Probably primarily, I love that it notifies me when products are back in stock because so many times my shades will often go out of stock and I have to wait around so I can add it to my shop tagger and then I'll get a notification when things are back in stock. If you haven't downloaded shop tagger yet I will have a link below and it's very easy to set up all you have to do is download the shop tagger button that way when you're browsing a website looking for things if you see something you like you can just literally click the little button at the top and then you can choose what kind of level of discount you want to be notified at and you can also add it to different like wish lists. They also have a version for mobile which I love most of my browsing probably does actually happen on my phone so as I say I will have that link below if you are interested in downloading shop tagger it's only been about two months since i did my last update and i wanted to do another one because obviously with like all the 2018 favorites videos that have been going around a lot quite a few products have been added to my list and there's also been a big influx of things being released at this time of year as well but first let's start off with some items that were on my wish list last time the first item was the first aid beauty coconut skin smoothing primer moisturizer big long name and this has actually been on my wish list for so long but guys I finally purchased it. Many of you were raving about this, especially in my best primers video that I did at the end of the year. I haven't actually had a chance to try this out. So while I, yes, now own it, I can't actually give you a review today because I haven't tried it yet. But I just wanted to let you know that I've finally done it, guys. I finally bought it. The next item that was on my wish list was the By Terry Ombre Black Stars, the little shadow sticks. Now, I was very keen to pick up this wee guy, the mini size from the sort of like holiday collections. And this is in the color number four, Bronze Moon. I do like it, but I just think the color maybe isn't the best one for me. And there are some other ones in the By Terry line that look a little bit more up my alley, a little bit more cool toned and sort of taupey. So I definitely enjoy the formula. I'd be interested in purchasing a full size, but it is beautiful and the color is so smooth and pigmented. The next product I mentioned last time was the Dose of Colors Pretty Cool Palette. I think I was just attracted to it because as I say, I love cool toned eyeshadows, but when I took another look at it, I was like, it is a little bit boring. And I have a lot of palettes that already look like that. Like if I had no neutral cool palettes, then that would be a good investment, but I was like, I don't need that. But I do really vouch for the formula. I have the Marvelous Mauves palette and really enjoy that. I just don't need the Pretty Cool palette. The next item that was on my list was the NARS Afterglow lip balm. I still haven't got around to buying this. I'm still keen to get it. It's still on my list, but it's just not one that I've had a chance to pick up yet. The next item was the ColourPop No Filter Sticks Foundation, and I picked this one up. If you saw my last makeup play date, I actually did a full face of ColourPop, and I used this in it. I wear the shade Fair 07N, which is like a really, really good match for me. They do have a shade 05 as well, which is like, I think it's about a similar depth, but it's more warm toned. But this is a really nice neutral where it doesn't lean very yellow at all, but it has quite a lot of peach in it. And at first I was a little bit like, oh, it's okay kind of about it when I first tried it but I've used it a few times and I do really really like it it definitely is a lot more sort of satiny matte compared to my revolution stick foundation which is glowy and I do prefer that one still I'm extremely snowed under with my PhD work at the moment and this has been great to just throw on in the morning so that I have some sort of coverage on my face and just chuck on some brows and then put my glasses on and head out the door to do some work like I am going very low-key day to day at the moment I think I like it a lot better than the liquid actually so if I could only keep one color pop foundation I would pick the stick one. The next product I mentioned was the MAC Shiny Pretty Things Face Palette in the shade Fair. And this was a limited edition holiday palette. I really wanted it for like traveling in there and I did obviously pick it up because I'm holding it. I have really, really enjoyed this palette and I'm really pleased I picked it up. It's a really perfect travel palette for me where all the shades work on my complexion. The highlight is borderline, but it definitely can work. It's just not as good as like Double Gleam, for example, which is what I'm wearing on my cheek today, if you're interested. But I love the bronzer. It's very unpigmented and that's a good thing for if you've got fair skin like mine so I really like it the next item I talked about was the Jouer concealer and I had two shades that I was interested in snow and lace snow was like the lighter color and lace was the more color that would sort of suit my complexion and I'm still waiting to get my hands on this one 
I can only order Jouer from Beauty Bay and it's not very often that I do Beauty Bay orders so I'm kind of waiting for like the next time that I do that. The next one that is still on the list and yes I still want to get is the Hourglass Veil Powder. I bought a few things from Mecca and for the holiday season and I actually forgot to buy this. I was going to get the travel size of it because it now comes in a small size and I wanted to get the small size and try it out. It's definitely still on my list because I've heard such good things. I also mentioned last time the Stella Shimmer and Glows and I picked up the little mini trio pack. It was a holiday limited edition but it's got some permanent shade like kitten and cloud in it kitten is a really nice kind of soft rosy kind of gold almost like a champagne-y gold and then cloud has quite a nice sort of lilac-y color to it it's really pretty these are my favorite like everyday shimmer colors on the lid like I like to just put one of these on and just blend it out I can do a one shadow look with this or I can also put a bit of a deeper color in the crease if I want to as well and I also mentioned the Hourglass Edit 4 palette and I did do a review or kind of like a makeup play date where I reviewed this in it and my thoughts on this were pretty meh actually in the end obviously I love hourglass powders and the quality of the powders in here is second to none like they are beautiful just for me how I'd want to use a palette like this I'd want it to do literally everything like I want it to be my finishing powder I want it to bronze highlight and blush my face <laughs> doesn't make sense but I wanted to do everything so that when I travel that would be all I'd have to take originally I wasn't actually going to pick this up I was, I was picking between this and the MAC one and I decided to get the MAC one because in person it seemed better and then Mecca kindly sent this one to me so that I could review it and I am pleased I got to try it because I do like it I like it enough to keep it round but I just felt like for the price could I recommend it as a palette that worked really really well on my complexion probably not but it's nearly there it was very close. I'm just really picky because these are so expensive. But those are the few things I talked about last time. I have actually quite a big list, as I say, because it's post-2018 beauty favorites time. First product on my wish list is the Sol de Janeiro Coco Cabana Cream. This I actually just saw a press release for it from Mecca. Like, it arrived in my email, and I was like, that looks really nice. I have tried the original, like, Sol de Janeiro Cream. I didn't think it really lived up to, like, the intense hype that it got. I was expecting it to be, like, the world's best body cream ever. And I think it was a really good body cream, but I was kind of like, eh. I think I just keep trying other ones but I think this new Coco Cabana one is a coconut scent and I love coconut so I'm pretty keen to actually try this one out I mean Mecca have really good advertising because they got me with this one too I've put on my wish list the Bare Minerals Gen Nude palette the little six pan palette and the rose color combo I need to go into store and look at this one because sometimes rosy tone eyeshadows can make me look a bit ill and I need to see whether it actually is rosy because online on the shop it actually looks more just like a nice neutral palette with a little bit of a cooler undertone it doesn't look super kind of pinky it may look that way in real life so i need to go in and check that one i think their makeup style really suits me too since i like neutrals and apart from today i usually do a slightly more natural makeup look i've also put on my wish list the drunk elephant apachione this is their new retinol product my last experience with retinol i don't think was very good i used the paula's choice one and i can't tell if it was that product because i had changed a few things in my routine this was about two years ago two and a half years ago but my skin got so like big cystic acne around my chin like really bad like i get hormonal breakouts but this was like really bad and i persisted with it for like six weeks and it just didn't get better and i thought okay maybe retinol's not for me so i never really tried again so I'm a bit apprehensive about this one but I am potentially keen to pick it up we shall see I may even go and get a sample of it first if Mecca will give me one because I'd like to try it first on my skin see how my skin reacts I also put on my list the Shantikai face brush because I saw this one online and it looks like the most beautiful bronzer brush it's like really nice and big and fluffy and it has a short handle which I really like because when you're traveling it doesn't take as much room in your bag trying to transition all my brushes over into like really good quality like forever brushes I have a few of them in my collection I've got a Surat Beauty blush brush some Hakuhodo brushes hourglass brushes like I've got some really nice ones I'm trying to gradually build up a forever brush collection certainly not something you can do overnight because they're really expensive but the Chantikai brush is only $66 which personally I thought was quite good for like a big fluffy face brush considering my Surat one is more than double that I was like oh cheap I have to bring myself back down to reality it's still $66 for a single brush but just in comparison, it's not that bad. I also saw that Hourglass are releasing a new foundation, the Vanish Liquid Foundation, and I love their Vanish Stick Foundation. I wear the shade Cream. Very keen to try it because I don't love a lot of Hourglass's liquid foundations. Their immaculate one looks terrible on me. If this is a formula that works well for dry skin, like the stick foundation does, then I'm very keen for it. I also saw that Urban Decay are releasing a new brow product called the Brow Blade. It has one of those sort of liquid liner pen tips on there, which is actually like what I used in my brows today. I used the MAC Shape and Shade, which is my current favorite one, but I'd be really keen to try out the Urban Decay one without realizing I have saved four concealers. <laughs> 
on my wish list. A lot of you asked me to try the PowerPlay concealer and I also just bought a concealer the other day from my Sephora order so you'll see that soon but yeah crazy. The first one is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer. Now this one really intrigues me and I'm quite interested in it because it's meant to be a more sort of medium satiny skin finish kind of concealer. Something that's not too heavy. I haven't worn shape tape in a while. It's very intense under my eyes. I really love it for spot concealing but I'm not sure about it under the eyes anymore. It's, I think I just love concealers that are a little bit lighter or if i'm going to go for something that's a bit more coveragey i'll go for like a pop concealer that's something that's really emollient like the max studio finish the description reminded me of like the Too faced naturally radiant concealer their original concealer not the big fat one which i love because that one is so nourishing and sort of plumping under the eye i really love that one and it's a lighter coverage so this one's definitely on the radar for me the other one that interested me a lot was the new elf camo concealer it looks like it's got a lot of really great fair shades i've never been able to find a concealer from elf that would work for me so I'm pretty keen to try it out. Maybe even order a couple of the shades just because it is so inexpensive. Other drugstore concealer that really interests me was the new Milani Conceal and Define. I think that's what it was called. And again, this one looked like it had a really great shade range. I'm definitely keen to try it out. I quite like their Conceal and Define foundation. I don't like love it, but I think it was good. I did retry it in the lead up to my Ana Awards because I was like trying to figure out, you know, which ones do I still really like? And I was like, eh pretty good but it wasn't a winner. I've also written down the Fenty concealer which I actually have ordered. It popped up on my screen the other day and Fenty's one of those brands that you kind of have to snap up straight away. I remember when the foundation in that launch like things were selling out so fast so I like jumped on the bandwagon and grabbed it. Because of my PhD I just don't really have the time to put out like super intense dedicated reviews on a single product but that's kind of why I'm doing those makeup play dates so I can put the product on for you and I can give you some thought and if I haven't tried the product before that video I always do updated thoughts in the description. So that's kind of what I'm doing for the next big while. So just be aware that if you're waiting for a review on a particular product, you might want to check out the play dates because those are where I'm going to be doing a lot of my like reviews. The next product is the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded Palette. I think this is the new version of the original Naked, but it's quite different. At first I was very underwhelmed by it. I was like, eh, whatever. But when I really started to look at it and then saw the swatches in that, I really liked the idea of it, the fact that it's got those warmer bronzy colors, but then it's also got some slightly cooler ones. There's that really nice grayish taupe color, the matte color that I'm really interested in. I'm definitely gonna go and look at it in store when it arrives here in Australia. The next product is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. This is such an old school product. This was hyped like five or six years ago. Everyone used it on YouTube and it was like on my wish list back then. And then it kind of went off because everyone stopped using it, but the Anna Edit has started using hers again, or I don't know if it's maybe a new one for her, but I've seen her using it. She recommended it in her favorites video and I was like, ooh. You know what? I really would like that, I think. I like the idea of like cream bronzers and stuff. Sometimes the colors though can be quite hard, like so it doesn't look too orangey. So I think I would actually go into like a Chanel counter and ask them to put it on me so I could see it on. That is everything that's on my wish list now. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about some of the things that have caught my attention lately. If there are any other products you think I should be putting on my wish list, anything that you've tried lately that has wowed you, I'd love to know. Put them in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with my videos. And until next Next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days and I'll see you then. Bye!